Hello everybody and welcome back to the Blues Not channel. Today I am back with the Power Rankings as it is the week 3 edition. Um, so I decided to do this on a Sunday instead of doing this on a Monday and I think I'm going to do that from now on because you know Monday is usually the busiest day for me. Usually is a day that I need to do a lot of stuff. Um, do a lot of assignment, homework for my college. So I decided to just do this on a Sunday instead, but yeah, uh, it's time to of course do this. It's time to either make people very happy or make them very upset. And we start off in 23rd and in dead last and staying in dead last is Colorado. Um, the Rapids didn't play this weekend, um, so that's why I decided to just put them in into the basement and there isn't really any teams that I look from my power rankings deservedly be move all the way down into the basement so sorry Rapids fan you're gonna be staying in the basement for now and in 22nd and pretty much the same reason as Colorado is going to be the Revs uh, New England like Colorado didn't play this weekend so they of course stay in that 22nd spot and again there's just nobody that I seen above them really had a big loss that deservedly be replaced in one of their spots so they stay in 22nd um, and I'm not quite sure if both of these teams will play in next week game and yes for the record there is games next week uh, I know it is the international break but MOS is just one of these weird leagues that still have games doing the international break and I'm pretty sure a lot of fans and also a lot of MOS team are not happy about that because they know that they're going to lose some of their starters or some of their players to international called up. And, you know, they're trying to get this figured it out. They're trying to not, maybe not potentially have a game when there ever there's an international break. But, unfortunately, that won't be the case. And in 21st, and this team dropped down five spots and was tied with the biggest loser of this week power rankings and that is Chicago um, for the fire they lost 2-1 to Minnesota um, and I know for a fact that they didn't have Bastian Schweinsteiger and also Mike Posner two of their better players in their team uh, but still you cannot lose to Minnesota um, uh, and it just feels like right now whoever lose to Minnesota is gonna get punished in the power rankings and just move them, them down straight away but yeah I mean you know I think that might be one of the reason the other reason is that a lot of teams around them also won and got a resort and this is going to be the same case for the other team that was tied with Chicago as the biggest loser in this week um, and the reason why is because other team around went won or got a draw and they of course lost so they have to move down uh, so yeah Chicago moved down five spots from last week and in 20th this team gained one spot from last week and that is DC and I think this team would have been stay at the same spot as last week or even maybe move down one spot uh, have they not rescued that draw it, right near the end of the game have uh, Luciano Acosta did not equalize for DC in the 90th seventh minute um, in that game against Houston they probably would have been stay either in the same spot or maybe in that 22nd spot and replace the refs but they did rescue themselves with a draw so they of course stay in 20th and moved up one spot and in 19th place this team moved up two spot and just play a couple of hours ago and that is FC Dallas uh, Dallas of course won this game um, they won uh, free nothing against Seattle uh, it's certainly a very much needed win for them but at the same time they kind of got gifted in this game with the fact that Seattle had a lot of injury coming into this game and also probably their best starters um, in this game Clint Dempsey got himself sent off by some really stupid reason 
um, they pretty much was handed the free points in this game. Um, so that's why I didn't move them up that much. I didn't think this was a game that, you know, I would say that FC Dallas can really get themselves going. I mean, it is a home win, which is good. It is a, a free points that they desperately need. But does that mean that this team can make a run now? And the fact that this team look going to be looking very good going forward? No, not at all. I think they still have a lot to prove in these upcoming weeks. And if they could win some of those games in the upcoming weeks, then I think that potentially they can, uh, they can really be back to where they were a couple of years ago and you know move up the power rankings. Um, but yeah, and in 18th place, this team moved up three spots and got a huge derby win against their biggest rival is Montreal who moves up three spots from last week um, you know Montreal of course beat TFC this week at home um, it was a absolute masterclass by Remy Gar in terms of his tactics and yeah they certainly deserve that win and certainly they deserve some good fortune in this game too um they have been just so unlucky so far in their first two game of the season and yeah they're now up to 18th and moved up three spots and in 17th place this is also a team that lost five spot and share the title for the biggest loser and i hate to say it but it has to be my quakes team and you know and i think i had a really tough decision with this one by putting them so low and make them lose five spots because they were playing against sporting kc on the road and it's always going to be hard to trying to go to sporting kc and trying to get a resort from there but because other team around them won and you know they of course lost the game that's why I moved them down five spots in this it's like I said it's the same reason of why I moved Chicago so low in the rankings and put them in 21st and basically them losing five spots even though um, they didn't really lose that badly against uh, Minnesota and the same can goes with the Quakes they didn't lose really that badly to Sporting KC um, but still, I, I I just think that other team around them got resort. I have to move them up or at least put them at the same spot. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Next up, and this team did not move anywhere from last week. And that, of course, is Portland because they did not play this week. And I think for the Timbers, uh, I'm pretty sure that they're going to be playing in the international break, uh, which means that probably they will lose a couple of guys from the international break. But for Portland, this is a good opportunity for them to try to figure out their defense and trying to sort it out because it has not been a good start to the season. And the performance that they have had in these first two games has been just shambolic so far. So they got to figure stuff out in their next game. Uh, I don't know who they, they actually play in the next game, but they need to sort this out. Um, but most likely they're going to be, or actually not most likely, but they are going to be on the road for the next game because, like I said, their home, uh, Providence Park, is still under renovation uh, from, from that new stand that they are building. Well, it's not really new, but they're just renovating that new stand to expand the capacity. So that's why the Timbers are on the road for the first couple of, of weeks of the season um, and in 15th place and another team that stays in the same spot as last week and that is Philly uh, the Union of course got a nil nil draw against Columbus um, and this game was pretty dull and it was a game that you could say that Philly probably should have won and it was also a game that you probably could have also say Philly should have lost because there was get time in that game against Columbus where they could have easily got three points and beat Columbus and put those chances away. But instead they didn't. And there was also time where they almost conceded to Columbus. So it's only fair to just with putting those two factor in and putting 
them at the same spot as they were uh, from last week. So yeah, that's exactly why I put them in 15th place. And in 14th place, this team lost two spots from last week and also lost 4-1 to Atlanta, but I'm not going to put them down super low um, because of one factor in that game. And that, of course, was that sending off by uh, by Watson, uh, Kendall Watson, that is. Um, I still think that that sending off was very harsh. And uh, once again, I, I got to kind of question the VAR kind of situation and how the ref handled the VAR situation there because it feel like he didn't handle it very well and you know Vancouver certainly undeservedly gone down to 10 men and after that it was just it was over for Vancouver there was just no way back for them Elena took advantage of that of the extra man in full force with Joseph Martinez scoring another hat trick um, and then they of course also score an own goal for Atlanta. They did, of course, get one in that game, but yeah, it wasn't a very good loss for them, uh, but at the same time, they got unlucky with that red card. That red card really changed this game um, for them, so that's why they, of course, moved to 14th, and in 13th, this team moved up four spots from last week, and that, of course, is RSL. Uh, RSL is starting to climb back up in the rankings, and although it wasn't an impressive win against the Red Bulls, you know, it was still a win, and they really needed that win after just getting absolutely destroyed by LAFC in their home opener 5-1. Um, and, you know, other team around them also kind of lost their game, so I decided to just move them up by four spots, and, you know, even it's though it's not a very impressive victory, that, of course, is the reason. And that's pretty much the reason for these power rankings this week because it was very tough for me to make this this week power rankings because I had to factor the fact that, okay, some team, of course, won in their respectable spots, so I have to move them up. But some team, of course, lost, and the loss that they have is either just unlucky losses by just bad refereeing decision or it's just that they were playing a better team. Um, so there was a lot to kind of factor in that. And at the end of the day, I just had to... I just had to kind of like put one kind of aside to where I would say that, you know, I'm not going to factor into that, which is kind of the reason why I put the Quake so, so low. I didn't factor the fact that they were playing a stronger team because just there were so many other factors into it. And it was going to just override and completely clash with just other factor of the reason why I do this power rankings. Uh, but yeah, um, in 12th place, and this team lost three spots from last week and continues to move down the power rankings is Orlando City. Um, for Orlando, obviously they lost 2-0 to NYCFC and yeah, they are just continue to move down the the power rankings and they are now now just have one point to show for in their first three games. Jason Christ is definitely feeling the heat a little bit. But at the same time, Orlando City were playing uh, a pretty strong team. Um, and also for the fact that they didn't they still have a couple of injury in their team. Um, but yeah, they of course moved down free spot because they lost that game. Um, but yeah, either way, in 11th, and this team moved down two spot, but this team did get a draw this weekend, and that, of course, is Houston, and if they didn't get the draw, then I probably would have moved them up maybe by a spot, or maybe stay at the same spot, because, you know, Houston were up 2 nothing in this game, and they were controlling this game uh, in the first half, but in the second half, they just... For whatever reason, they just stopped attacking and let DC just kind of come at them. And it really just cost them in this game. And, you know, um, obviously it has to be infuriating for Wilma Cabrera and his team to give up a late goal and give up uh, all three. Well, not all three, but to, to not earn all three points on the road against a DC United team that is not very good. But, yeah, I... 
I'm going to put them in 11th for now because they didn't lose this game. And a point on the road for Houston is always good because Houston is one of those teams that just do not win on the row um they just they're just a team that always rely on their home kind of wins which is why that if they win this one it will just kind of cancel out their home loss that they had last week against the white caps but unfortunately that wasn't the case they drew um and in 10th place and this might sound crazy but they are the biggest winner of this power ranking and the biggest mover and that of course is minnesota um, they're in 10th place. I know that some people is going to question why in the world do I put the Loons in the top 10 when they, you know, have one, two, one, one, two games against teams that are either injury riddle or, or just not very good team at all. Well, that's because Minnesota themselves are also injury riddle. I mean, Minnesota does not have have some of their best star like Sam Cronin, uh, Abu Danladi, and also uh, Kevin Molino for the uh, and Kevin Molino of course for the rest of the season, and they're still winning. And it turns out that the guys that you probably usually never heard of, guys like Ibsen and Nicholson, are stepping up for this team. And yeah, that's two wins on the bounce for Adrian Heath. Minnesota team and you know that's why I gotta move them up this that is something that I definitely did not expect Minnesota to do I fought with all these injury this team looked like they're they're going to lo lose a lot of games uh, this season but instead they're doing the opposite they're still winning games with these just back-breaking injuries and yeah I have to move them up by that even though it wasn't a, a very kind of it wasn't a big win against Chicago. It wasn't like a statement win. The fact that they can still do this with with injuries and just guys that you never usually heard of are kind of like stepping up. That's what. There's the bonus for them. They moved up eight spots from last weekend into the top ten. But either way, um, in ninth place, and this team moved up three spots from last weekend. This is the only team that did not play from this week but actually moved up is the galaxy um and a lot of that has to do with teams around them actually lost and teams around them that won their games um so that's why i decided to put the galaxy right there in ninth place i mean if i move the galaxy down back to where it is i would put minnesota in ninth place which i think that's a little bit too much and put houston to only like minus one spot um you know, and I think they probably deserve more than that after they just blew a 2 nothing lead on the road. Um, so, yeah, that's why I decided to move them up into ninth place. And in 8th place, this team did not move anywhere, but this team did lose. And that, of course, is the Red Bulls. Who lost one nothing against RSL, and the reason why I did not really drop them down is because if I drop them down I'll put the galaxy up to eighth place and that would be just once again too much I mean I can't just move the galaxy four spot up even though they did not play at all and you know for the Red Bulls I think that loss to RSL was pretty unfortunate um, they had a lot of chances in that game to potentially get a draw and I think they certainly deserve at least a draw in that game but unfortunately that wasn't the case and they were also playing some second string players and also they had to travel all the way across the other side of the country in only three days to play this game against RSL so it was always going to be tough for Jesse Marsh team um, and they did the best that they could do in that game and was unlucky to not come out of Rio Tinto with at least a draw in that game so yeah, um, but next up in 7th place, this team stays at the same spot as last week. And that, of course, is LAFC. And like I said, already a couple times they did not play this week. So really cannot move them up and move them down at all. Um, but unlike the Ga Galaxy, I think LAFC stays in around the same, same spot because teams around them probably didn't really win 
or lose around them. I mean, if I move LAFC down and move the Red Bulls up, then that wouldn't make sense because the Red Bull lost this weekend. I can't really move a team that lost this week up. I mean, it's very rare that I actually do that unless if it's just so unlucky for them and where referee decision just goes against them. They have by far the, the better opportunity and just hit the post so many times. Everything was kind of like against them. That's the only time when I actually move a team up. Uh, but, you know, the Red Bulls, although they didn't really had like, like, um, they didn't really did very well in terms of their finishing. That was the only thing that was kind of like against them. The referee in that game wasn't really just quite against them in that game. Um, and even the penalty that they conceded, I think that was 100% a penalty. So, yeah. Um, now moving on into six. And this team dropped three spots from last week. And that, of course, is TFC, who, you know, now is finding themselves outside of the top five after being first in my preseason rankings. Um, you know, TFC has now lost lost their first two game. And although you might think that's a... That, a pretty concerning factor for TFC. You gotta also factor the fact that um, TFC just play a midweek game against Tigres and they usually never do very well in terms of playing a league game following a CCO game. In fact, there was like a fact on MOSsoccer.com that talks about how they actually have not won a single game in their last 11 CCO appearance. Um, uh, after they play a CCL game, so yeah, looks like that trend continues in this in this week as they lost to their biggest rival Montreal, and you know, like I said, with that Montreal game, they Greg Vanny just completely got out tactics by Remy Gard on that. But yeah, so they're in sixth place, in fifth place, and this team is going to lose one spot from last week is Seattle and you know I kind of explained it with the FC Dallas kind of rankings you know Seattle had a lot of injury coming into this game and they just got they kind of just gifted FC Dallas the win after Dempsey got sent off and they had to come off of a midweek game also um, when they had to go to Chivas Guadalajara which they lost that one so yeah, it's been a rough week for Seattle. Uh, certainly, they, they're a little bit heartbreaking that they lost in the CCL, which is a competition that they were so focused on this season. And they still have a lot of injuries to try to recover from. Um, but, yeah, so Seattle, of course, in fifth there. And in fourth place, this team dropped, also dropped one spot from last week, and that is is Columbus. Uh, Columbus, of course, drew nil-nil against the Union. Um, you know, their winning start kind of comes to an end, and it's just another game where I talked about with Philly. It's a game that they probably should have won, but at the same time, they're probably lucky to not drop any points. And they did get a point on the road. I mean, anytime you get a point on the road is always a good thing. Whether if it's a sloppy game like what Columbus just did. Or maybe you just had a heartbreaking fashion like what Houston did. Go up 2 nothing and just basically drew 2-2. Two -two. So yeah. Uh, in third place and moving up three spots and back to where they were. Or at least I think that's where they were when I make my first power rankings. I think I put them in second place in my first power rankings ever on my channel. And that, of course, is Atlanta, who moves up three spots. Um, you know, they are back to, to near the top after I basically completely slashed them all the way down to, I think, 10th or 9th place in my first week of power rankings because they lost to Houston for nothing and they deservedly got back to this spot because you know a couple of team around them lost and also you know they kind of got lucky with the the sending off but at the same time they took advantage of that and you know when you take advantage of that there's really nothing else to say that you know that's a that job done to you fair play to Atlanta for doing that so that's why I moved them in third place and in second place staying 
in the same spot as last week, and that, of course, is Sporting KC, who got a win last week, or got a win this week against San Jose, um, and it was a pretty, it's another kind of unorthodox and pretty win for Sporting KC at home as they beat them 3-2, um, and, you know, Sporting KC, I'm not sure if this is going to be how they are going to be the rest of the season because now they have conceded seven goals in the last three games. But at the same time, they have also scored uh, seven goals in the last three games. So, yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing that what Peter Vermees is doing with this team and how, on one hand, they figured out the their issue with scoring last year. But on the other hand, there is a bit of a problem with the defense and how it's not as strong as it was last season. I mean, I think that's a gr good trade-off if you're a fan because you want to see your team be a little bit more exciting, scoring some goals. I mean, goals obviously always energize fans, which is all always obviously the reason why Atlanta's fan is always so hyped up and why Atlanta is, is probably have the best fans in the MLS because... Atlanta is just such an exciting team to watch and you know they don't really have a very good defense to like like Sporting KC right now but they are they can score goals and I think Sporting KC fan will, will kind of take that even if they had to concede one or two goals and stuff like that but yeah um and in first place and staying in the top for the third week in a row and that is NYCFC who won another one and as long as they keep continue to win their games they are going to stay at top and unless if they start losing games and they and if one of these teams will win games they are going to be staying in that first pl place and this team is just NYCFC is just so good right now they are by far the best team right now in the league. They they have very good attack. They have very good midfield and defense. And yeah, this could be a team that potentially is going to win the Supporter Shield this year. So yeah, that of course is my power rankings for this week. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this power ranking. Which team do you agree um, that where I put? Do you think some teams that I actually put a little bit low? Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will see you guys next time.